Good evening, this is Ronald Coleman, inviting you to join Mrs. Coleman and me for the next half hour when our sponsors, the brewers of Schlitz beer, present the Halls of Ivy. If you like good beer, do as millions of people are doing all over the country. Ask for Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. Schlitz tastes so good to so many people that it's the largest selling beer in America. It has to be fine to be first. Now, the Halls of Ivy. Welcome again to Ivy, Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. With the student body and the faculty of Ivy College in the grip of final examinations and administrative chores for the academic year completed, Dr. William Todd Hunter Hall has found an idle hour or so to reacquaint himself with a small volume, which is not included but should be in the great books course. It's called a checkbook. Nine and eight, seventeen. And five, twenty-two, and seven, and four. The love of money is the root of all evil, and I wish I had the green financial sum to locate all the roots. <laughs> Thirty-three and six. Darling, what did I do with the last and, statue of you, Victor? Uh, Thirty-three and six. Uh, I, I, I'm sure I don't know, Vicky. At nine and eight, seventeen, and five. Uh, if, as Oscar Wilde said, experience is the name everyone gives to their mistakes, this is a big experience. <laughs> 22 and 7. Oh, dear, did you see the last copy of that? Oh, excuse me, am I interrupting? Yes, my sweet, you are, but you are not impeding me half as much as my own lack of fiscal competence. Oh, a checkbook. Did you find a mistake? I found something wrong, but I can't find a mistake. Uh, if, if a herpetologist should happen to drop in, please hide me in a basket, will you? Well, I don't even know what a herpetologist is. Uh, well, he's an expert on snakes, and I've discovered that I'm a rather poisonous adder. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me, uh, <clears throat> let me see now, 22 and 7. Can I help, Toddy? No. I simply love to catch the bank in an error. They overcharged me 18 cents once. And then with umpteen million dollars in assets. <laughs> yeah, no, darling, as a matter of self-discipline and a brushing up in simple arithmetic, I'd better do this myself. <clears throat> 33 and 3. And, uh, oh, 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 here it is. I didn't carry my four. That explains everything. Not to me, it doesn't. Well, I mean, I, I found the mistake, which was my own. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Now you can't go storming into the bank. There must be a lot of satisfaction in hearing our own screams of rage echoing off marble walls. <laughs> yes, yes, but let's save our screams for a more worthy purpose, such as cheering at the discovery that we have $84 more than I thought. $84? Now we can go to Mexico this summer. $84. Mm. $84. $42 apiece. Um, I, I don't mind traveling on a shoestring, my darling, but it's more comfortable if you have shoes as well. <laughs> but $84, how wonderful. <laughs> it isn't the amount that's important. It's the joy of the unexpected windfall, the treasure trove, the bursting of the bonds of the budget, <laughs> the omen of good fortune ahead. Viva Mexico! <laughs> I start packing our bags, may I remind you about your last unsuspected windfall? Do you remember? You found a five-dollar bill you'd forgotten all about and promptly rushed out and bought me a new dinner dress costing 50 pounds that much. Yeah, and well spent, too. You made such an impression on Cyrus McElhenney at the Founders' Day dinner that he doubled his endowment on the spot. That yeah. dinner dress, Vicky, was the foundation for the new girls' gymnasium. Mm. It was the first time I ever attended a formal dinner in a foundation garment. <laughs> but uh, what's 
how to do budget fussing today. I'm usually the little financial genius who messes up the tech stubs. Well, I finally found the leisure for it. Look, my desk is clear. My commencement speech is written, uh, subject to being rewritten five more times, of course. All important correspondence out of the way, official documents initialed in triplicate, no impending appointment. Uh, by the way, darling, your electric clock has stopped. Yes, I know, dear. It stopped last night during our brief power failure. Shall I start it again? No, 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 please don't. I, I'm enjoying the feeling of time at a standstill. College president works self out of jobs. I'm going to paint a little sign. A vacant mind for rent during summer months. <laughs> hey, come on, Vicky. Uh, let's go for a walk. Jasmine Snow, wonderful. Ah, the lovely months of June. June, a four-letter word meaning a proclamation of emancipation for college presidents. <laughs> it's a lovely evening, too. Our blessings are piling up, an $84 bookkeeping bonus, a husband with nothing to do, and all on a balmy June night. Yes, how beautiful this night. The balmiest sigh which... Vernal Zephyr's breeze in evening's ear were discord to the speaking quietude that wraps this moveless scene. I was about to say that the campus is quiet, but you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> well, not I, but Shelley. Yeah, he was pretty good, too, but he yes. was just one poet. You know him all. Oh, look. The dormitory's all lit up. Big run on midnight oil this week. Yes, final exam. The nightmare, but also the triumph of the undergraduates. The suspense of not knowing what you really know until you know what the questions are. <laughs> and if you know the answers, the tremendous sense of relief. The hours of agony so easily and happily forgotten with the passing grade. Hardy, you know, we really should start talking about what we want to take with us to Mexico. Oh, fortunately, we've plenty of time for that. Uh, you know, I, I didn't think Mr. Wellman would be that considerate. About what? Well, he called me this afternoon to let me know he was taking care of everything. In fact, for him, he was quite frolicsome about relieving me of the last minute details. Oh, I can't imagine Mr. Wellman being frolicsome. It's like having a great dame trying to sit in your lap. <laughs> I know. The, the only great dame I like in my lap is Hamlet. Uh, remind him... Remind me to pack him in my trunk when we... Uh... Oh, look, Toddy. There's Ray Adams coming this way. He's awfully nice. I'll be really sorry to see him graduate. Well, I'll tell him that. If it'll please you, I'm sure he'll try to fail all his examinations. <laughs> ah, ah, good evening, Ray. Oh, you've been, Mr. Hall. Hello, Mrs. Hall. Well, where have you been hiding? Yes, I haven't had a chance to congratulate oh, you. Oh, don't put a hex on me, Dr. Hall. I've still got four exams to go. Well, that was, that was a splendid performance you gave the other night in the senior play. Oh, that? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, thanks, Mrs. Hall. I've forgotten all about that. Uh, say, if you two will excuse me, I've got to run. Bye. Bye. Hmm, he looked worried. Well, of course, that's a normal student expression for this time of the year. Oh, I know, but Ray has always taken things in stride. Oh, well, his business, I suppose. Mine is finished for the year. With Mr. Wellman taking over final details of... I wonder just what final details... Maybe, maybe, maybe there is something... Now, don't I, worry I about it, dear. Enjoy your freedom. Oh, I am enjoying it. <laughs> I'd enjoy it even more if I knew what Mr. Wellman's purpose was in... Uh... Now, now, let me see. Uh, he cancelled the board meeting for this evening. John Merriweather's out of town. Mr. Cooper's ill. Mr. Crane's wife is having a baby. A girl, I hope. Well, how do you hope it's a girl? Uh, well, because it would be a pity for a man who plays golf as badly as Mr. Crane to have a son to grow up and be ashamed of him. <laughs> yes, this is the way he... Oh, hello, Professor Carter. Say, Professor Carter, did you ever find that copy of... Well, it don't look so hurt, darling. He did take time to flap his hand at you. Well, I know, but I wanted to talk to him about the economics curriculum next fall. 
Well, I suppose it's a wait. Um, uh, what were we talking about? Mr. Wellman, but I'd rather talk about Mexico. It's a warmer subject. I don't care how jocular Mr. Wellman gets over the phone. <laughs> no, he, he's not very successful as a humorist. Although his brevity is the soul of wit, he should be because he has as, has as brief a soul as anyone I know. <laughs> Let's get back to Mexico. Now, do you think we can see all of it on $84? Or uh, just a quick dash across the border, two choruses of El Rancho Grande and back with some smuggled perfume? <laughs> Vicky, my sweet, you are perpetuating an unfair stereotype. All Scotsmen are not misers. All the Irish are not brawlers. All Armenians do not peddle rugs. And Mexico is not composed entirely of border towns, enchiladas, and La Cucaracha played on a mail-order guitar. Well, no, I don't suppose they really are. But... You know, it, it's a magnificent country. Beautiful and dramatic, colorful and courteous. Mm, how its courtesy has withstood the onslaught of tourists in cowboy shirts. Who cannot see Mexican dignity through Mexican dust is more than I shall ever. Hi, Mrs. Hall. Well, hello, oh, Dr. Hall. Oh, good evening, Miss Sherman. You're the first cheerful-looking person we've seen this evening. Finished with your examinations? Oh, no, and don't let my happy little face fool you, Doctor. Actually, I'm in an awful mess. I got my thesis in on time, but I forgot all about the bibliography, and now I can't find my notes. They've completely vanished. Well, that might not be as fatal as you're making it sound. If, if you tell me the subject... Oh, Dr. Hall, oh, you're a doll. <laughs> but that's all you need with all you've got on your mind. Besides, Professor Huntley's been a complete lamb. I got panicked and cried on his shoulder this afternoon, and he said he'd give me a 24-hour extension. But I still haven't found him. I'm absolutely fractured. Well, excuse me, won't you? I've got to dig up a bibliography someplace far. It would cheer up, darling. I mean, losing one's bibliography can't be that bad. I've had worse crises than that when I was three, just losing my bib. <laughs> well, it isn't the bibliography, but it's, it's serious. When a girl intelligent enough to write a thesis demanding a bibliography descends to terms like, I'm absolutely fractured, I got panicked, Professor Huntley is a complete lamb, and Dr. Hall, you're a doll. <laughs> but you are a doll. <laughs> <laughs> I am beginning to think of myself as being full of excelsior. <laughs> decorative, you know, decorative, but not very useful. Oh, well. Courage, Camille, it isn't that bad. I've seen the times when you were quite useful around here. Yes, but what did she mean about me having so much in my mind? I have nothing on my mind. <laughs> And when a student doesn't feel that I'm approachable enough to help with a small problem like a bibliography... Toddy, Toddy, dear, you're being unfair to yourself. Judicial criticism, you've always said, is constructive and helpful. Well, I know, but in this case... Well, in this I... case, it's unfair criticism. Remember when Bread and Honey opened in London and Newman Follinsby gave it a dreadful notice because he didn't like Arthur Pinero, our director? Yes, I remember it quite well. It was a completely unethical unnecessarily caustic review. My very point, darling. Now, remember what you said at the time? Oh, I said a great deal, as I recall it, including that the success of the play refuted the critics. You said he was guilty of a foul. He was belting below the hip. <laughs> and so are you. So come on, let's finish our war. <laughs> Hall's survivor, it's the next morning. Dr. Hall is sitting at his desk where he's just covered two legal-sized sheets of paper with circles, dots, triangles, curlicues, faces of clocks, and various rather unreasonable facsimiles of Mr. Wellman's rather unreasonable face. I brought you another cup of coffee, Todd. You didn't eat half your breakfast, you know. I... Oh, you're busy. I didn't mean to bother you. No, no, I'm not busy, darling. I'm just exercising my subconscious. If my virtuous New England ancestors could see me wasting time like this, they would deplore my Yankee doodling. I think you doodle dandy, Yankee. <laughs> 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 
How's that thing in the middle there? The face that looks like an embittered gargoyle. I'm complimented. You recognized Mr. Wellman. Oh, <laughs> that's a fine way to spend a glorious morning like this. Come on out and help me pick some roses. Well, having married you, my love, picking another rose would be sheer redundancy. <laughs> Gee, thanks. You're my fella. <laughs> Now, besides, I, I, I'm i expecting a call, and I, I I don't want to be too far from the telephone. Oh, of course. Uh, has the mail come yet? Yes, it has. Two circulars, a dry cleaning bill, and this letter addressed to Mr. and Mrs., so I opened it. Uh-huh. It was a clipping from the Standard Times of New Bedford, Massachusetts, and a card congratulating us on our golden wedding anniversary. <laughs> it said, and I'll I've got it somewhere in my pocket here, anyway. It says... Occasions like this are sure to embolden your friends to be happy for weddings so golden. Mm. Well, that's that, that very nice. Toddy. Mm-hmm. The poem, if I may so refer to it, is congratulating us on our golden wedding anniversary. Well, in that case, my dear, we, we, we must answer and, and thank whoever... Our uh, what? <laughs> I was afraid it would be our golden anniversary before you realized what I said. <laughs> well, let, let, let's see it. Well, oh, this isn't for us. It's addressed to Professor William T. Hall, Snipper to it Road, Rochester, New York. Or oh, give it back to the mailman and tell him it was delivered at the wrong address, yes, William. I certainly shall. Stop frowning, dear. Are you worried about something? Uh, no, no, just puzzled. No communications from anybody, even Mr. Wellman. No phone calls. No problems. I don't know if we can go to Mexico. I may still be in Coventry now. I seem to be persona non grata with everyone. Well, you're so mad to come loudy with me. And what's Mexico anyway? It's just the place to go. There are others. When you feel we can leave, you'll put a finger on the globe, give it a spin. And where it stops, we go. That's it. Round and round and round it goes. And where it stops, I'll ask, what clothes? <laughs> Now, that's always a woman's first question. A man starting off on a journey asks, how's the food? A, a, a woman says, I haven't got a thing to wear. <laughs> <laughs> However, I, I think that... But there, uh, you see, you're not being ostracized at all. Oh, very reassuring. Hello, Dr. Hall speaking. Oh, hello, Professor Heathcliff. Glad to hear from you. Uh, what? Oh. Yes, well, it does happen sometimes, no, 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 that's quite all right. I understand. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, uh, everything going on all right in your department? Oh, it is, yes. Yes, I, I know how busy you must be, yes, of course. Well, uh, uh, goodbye. Yes, that sort of thing does happen frequently, particularly if you have a lot of things on your mind. I've done it myself many times. Done what? To who? Well, Professor Heathcliff dialed me by mistake. He was calling the library. <laughs> But I, that reminds me. I've got a lot of books that are overdue and some shopping I'd like to attend to if you won't be using the car for an hour or so. No, I'm afraid I won't be. I've nothing to do. I'll get the car out for you. Yeah, well, I really wasn't planning to leave for an hour or two. So I might as well get it out anyway. Well, all right, Toddy. If you... Hello? Yes? Uh, I'll take it, Vicky. I'm awfully sorry, Toddy. It's for me. Oh. Is it? Yes. Huh? Mrs. Merriweather. Oh, she did. Hey, ask her if John's back yet. Yeah, just a minute, Tolly. Yes, well, how's she feeling? Good. Uh-huh. How many pounds? Seven thirteen. Well, that's big for a girl. Hmm. At the cottage hospital. Yeah. Well, I'll order some flowers today. Oh, by the way, is Mr. Merriweather back yet? Oh. Well, I'd better ring off now. Dr. Hall is expecting an important call. But thank you for letting me know. Goodbye. Mrs. Crane has had her baby, and Mr. Merriweather's not back yet. And not being one to burn the scandal at both ends, I'm sure there's no connection. <laughs> uh, Victoria, in, in the interest of truth, I must admit that when I said I was expecting a call, I meant in a general sort of way, not a specific particular phone call, oh. but the sheer boredom of... of sheer... Here, Vicky, let's cut some roses. (laughs) 
William Cowper put it neatly when he said, absence of occupation is not rest. A mind quite vacant is a mind distressed. I can never remember whether he said that before he went mad or after. <laughs> well, it sounds like after. Of course, there's a difference between a mind that's vacant and one that's just on vacation. Yeah, well, I planned I should say the only difference is brains. Oh, and there come some of my favorite brains down the street right now. Oh, but they're going to be addled if it keeps up that pace. Oh, yes, it's Professor Warren. Uh, uh, trying to set a new sprint record, Professor? Hi, Doc. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Hall. Can't stop for long. I got my momentum up, and that's one thing. If you lose, you can't refill at the nearest gas station. <laughs> Well, you sound chipper enough. I feel lousy enough. <laughs> Mrs. Hall, you're the first good thing I've seen all week. Well, the only excuse I'll accept for you're not coming to see us is final examinations, Professor. Final examinations, final rubbish. One of the most monstrous acts of human sadism in all history. You spend months painfully pouring information into the opaque heads of a bunch of kids, and then when they're half drowned in it, you stand them up against the wall and shoot them full of questions. <laughs> And if they haven't got the answers for them right then, that minute, while they're in a state of shock, they're dead. <laughs> well, you can carry out their bodies, Dr. Hall. I won't. <laughs> you know, darling, Professor, William has been waiting for just such a critical situation all day. Huh? Well, I'll admit, Professor, that the pressures of final examinations may seem to be unfair. But after all, education is a preparation for thinking. You must be able to think under pressure if you're going to live under pressure. And who doesn't live under pressure these days? There are demands as well as rewards in our civilization. I'd like to discuss this with you further. But now, I, I, I hear. I, I got to see Charlie Holmes. You know him? Oh, yes. He's a history major. Uh, one of your best students. I you know what's happening? Here, we should he's be. flunking in history. And you know why? He's petrified. And do you know why he's petrified? Uh, no, don't answer. I'm not going to send him to a psychoanalyst either. I am going to handle this myself. So I have to hit him over the head with two volumes of the DNF of the RE. Now, what on earth is the DNF of the RE? The trade talk, Vicky. Decline and fall of the Roman Empire. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> well, Professor, if it's... Hey, it's that's not a bad idea either. Or I might use Motley's Rise of the Dutch Republic. It's heavier. <laughs> Did you say something, Doc? Well, I wondered if perhaps you'd like, uh, like me to speak to Holmes. I've a little free time now. No, 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 good... no, thanks uh, all the same, but he's my responsibility. I don't know what scared him, could have been me. But whatever it was, I've got to fix it. Why, that kid could ruin my reputation. You don't know how well off you are, Doc. What I wouldn't give for a nice, soft, administrative job this time of year. <laughs> I, I think William would gladly trade places with you, Professor Warren. He's had a success as a college president. He's worked himself out of a job. Oh, I, I wouldn't go so far. Mrs. Hall, you. me as president of this college is an appalling conception. <laughs> well, Doc, I've wasted enough of your valuable time. Well, I have plenty to spare today. Besides, it's going to take me a couple of hours to get my jalopy out of that badminton court that passes for a parking space in back of Emerson Hall. i got to run. Well, you run back soon. I will. And, uh, Mrs. Hall, if my dementia senile seems to be showing a bit this morning, I want you to know that while final exams may be tough for the students, they're murder on the professor. <laughs> Bye. Bye. For a moment, you two might have made a bargain, Toddy. You've been looking for a problem all day, and he's got too many. Yes, the professors are fulfilling their responsibilities, and the students are attending to their work. I've been trying to do nothing too laboriously. And if I don't get a problem soon, I'll have to make one. Uh, what was it Warren was saying about the, uh, the parking situation? Oh, well... Back to the roses. Now, which ones do you think? Uh, should we? Is that our telephone? Yeah, I think so. Do you want me to get it? No, no, don't bother. You better open the door before you try to go in. Hello, this is Dr. Hall speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Wellman. I was hoping to hear from you. 
No, 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 nothing special. How did uh, uh, everything go? Oh, it is. That's fine. No, 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 there's nothing I... Yes, yes, there is one little thing, Mr. Wellman. I'm sure you're aware of the alarming increase of students and faculty automobiles during the last year. It's created a critical parking problem. Yes, yes, there is a possible solution. Mr. Wellman, how would you feel about tearing down the science building to make space for a parking lot? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a parking lot, like a science building. It needn't be the science building. Tearing down Emerson Hall would create a large parking area. <laughs> <that> we... <laughs> Now, now, just, just think about it, Mr. Wellman. Goodbye. Uh, Vicky, I hope you couldn't overhear what Mr. Wellman said. It was hardly suitable for feminine ear- ears. Well, I couldn't, but I overheard what you suggested. Tear down Emerson Hall for a parking lot? Are you serious? No, of course not. But for not having any problems, I had to create one. You see, Mr. Wellman was in time... Yeah, I'll get it. Uh, Dr. Hall speaking. This is as good a time as any, and I find that there's no reason to... Listen, Mr. Wellman, I agree with you. <laughs> you what? Completely. You... I will ask for a demolition bids tomorrow. Yeah, but, but, but Mr. Well, Wellman... I... I did. Most constructive. Goodbye. <laughs> what have I done? He wants... He wants to... Vicky, he wants to tear down everything on the campus. <laughs> well, congratulations, you've got a problem. Now, how are you going to feel being president of a parking lot? Good hey, night, everybody. Night. week at this same time at the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Special Warren is played by Arthur Q. Bryan. Others are cast with Barbara Eiler and High Everbank. Tonight's script was written by Barbara Milton Merlin and Don Quinn. Music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. The Halls of Ivy was created by Don Quinn, directed by Nat Wolf, and presented by the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who invites you to enjoy the Pulitzer Prize Playhouse on television on Friday night. Ken Carpenter.